Welcome to the Body Meets Mind podcast. I am Paul and today we have a very, very special guest. But first, I would like to introduce a very beautiful, handsome gentleman by the name of Tom. How are you, mate? Mate, I'm very good. We, we've got it. We've, I mean, our guest is a very handsome gentleman. So to, to put me in that uh, in that area is uh, it's very good. Um, you know, we're, we're we're interviewing a megastar today. Megastar, <laughs> mega. Yes, uh, um, we paid lots may, of money. We've blown the whole podcasting budget. <laughs> you you may have read his book. It's called Green Light. That's right. Uh, <laughs> um, Lane Taylor, <clears throat> otherwise known as Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> how, how are you, my friend? Hey, let me tell you guys, if I got a dollar for every single time someone said that <laughs> i would be a very very wealthy man right now <laughs> can you can you give us so, a uh because you've got that southern droll as well from what i mean I can know. you give us a quick little mcconaughey for for all the listeners playing at home <laughs> all right all right all right oh, oh that that is, go. it's good that is That's good really good <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah i've got some funny stories maybe maybe later in the podcast we can talk some maybe the funniest story because i do have that funny story but maybe maybe later on in the show Magnificent. Yeah. Looking yeah. forward to that. Um, yeah. Lane, you know, thank you so much for coming on the show. It uh, means a lot. Uh, you've got an incredible kind of story that you've uh, really been living over the last little while. And I'd love to just know if you could tell us a little bit about where you've been, how you've been transitioning into where you are right now as well. Yeah, man. Well, I, I honor you too, and thank you for for letting me get on here and, and talk with you guys. This is a subject that I'm, man, I'm so passionate about. I'm so want this message that I've been. It's been put on my heart. Literally, has been put on my heart years ago, almost a decade ago. And so now to live this out and to share stories like this, this is what I'm so passionate about. And I believe that people's stories they matter and they change people's lives. Mm. So for me. I'm from the United States. I know that you guys are not, maybe some of your listeners are not from there, but I did what I was supposed to do. I went to college. I went to university and I got a marketing degree and I knew that I wanted to be in sales. I knew that I wanted to be with people and I, I did that. I actually had a job before I even graduated from college. And I thought that's what it was supposed to be. I was going to go to go get the six figure job, and I was, I, that was it. That was going to be what my life was like. And I, it served me in a season, but as time went on, I realized that I was built for more, which is kind of what I've always. That's kind of what my new my my new slogan is, my new podcast, my new business is. I knew I was built for more. I kept doing things that I was like, man, I'm built for more. Man, I'm built for more. But what happened when I was in that corporate career is I realized that I didn't really have a mentor growing up. I didn't really have that connection with someone. But I found myself having conversations with people and learning from them and asking them questions like, how did you do this? How did you do that? Like, I, because I didn't know I was so green and no one was teaching me, no one was telling me what to do. And then about 10 years ago, I found podcasting. And I just remember if you guys have been in that or if you people that listen to this, I would listen on repeat all these different types of episodes. And I would just be like, man, this is so cool. I want to do that one day, mm -hmm. but I want to build a community of people where I can have those interviews with people and I can hear what someone in Australia or someone in Bali, and I can hear what they're doing with their life and I can share their stories with people. Well, I didn't do it for the longest time because I had imposter syndrome. You know, I was like, I'm not, I can't know who, who's going to listen to me. Like no one's going to listen to me. Why would anyone do that? And I was still in corporate America and I was still kind of going and, and grinding at the monotonous of the corporate lifestyle, much like maybe some of your listeners are like that. That's just mm -hmm. what I thought that that's what I was supposed to do. You know, that's what I thought I was supposed to do. And so about Five years ago, built for more was put into my mind. And then I had a vision, basically. And I was like, man, like this is, I know I'm built for more, but I don't really know how I'm going to do this. I'm, I don't know when I'm going to start this podcast. I don't know how I'm going to do it. How am I going to get it out there? But just so happened to be, and I know why, I know now why 
I didn't start it then because I wasn't ready for it. Mm. And we can get into that later. I believe that you were given what you could handle at that time. Mm -hmm. And that's what I believe. And an opportunity came to my wife. Now my, my wonderful wife and I now to build an online business and learn the online business aspect of it and learn social media marketing and understand how to market to people. And we got to do that. We got to build a business together, which we still do, but I got to learn the insides of that. And I pushed the whole built for more thing down. And I was still working in corporate America. I was still kind of grinding away at that. And then about a year ago, one of my best friends who I train with, uh, ex exercising, mental, like all the types of stuff. He's a, he's a doctor here in the States. He's a holistic health practitioner. And we would go on long runs and we would go biking and triathlon training. And I'd be like, man, like you should start a podcast. I told him this and he looked at me guys and he said, lead me. Mm. And I was like, that was it. Like, okay, okay, here we go. <clears throat> about a year ago, it's been literally, it's been about a year ago. Um, I bought all the equipment. I got everything ready to go and I helped him launch his podcast. Awesome. And I was learning everything on how to do a podcast. I was learning how to do it. I was learning how to edit it. I was learning how to market. I was learning all this type of stuff. And in the back of my mind, I knew this was coming. I knew what I was about to release. I just felt it in my, my mind, in my spirit. And then I left corporate America in January of this past year. Mm. I said, I'm over it. No more. I know that I'm built for more and I'm going to step into that. And so I did that. And then about three, four months ago, I had another vision of saying, Hey, launch this podcast, launch this brand, launch the website that you've had the domain for almost three years. Yep. This is the time. This is the time to do it. And so with that, that's a little bit uh, of where I'm at right now. So hopefully that helped a little bit. Mm. Yeah, that's that. That's wonderful. And you know, you've you, you've got such an incredible uh, presence and and brand on social media. As you uh, you know, I've been following you uh, for quite some time, and we've been, we've been lucky enough to be in exchange with one and another. And uh, I don't know, your your genuine authenticity shines through. You've got an incredible, you, you've got a, a great balance of humor, a great balance of sincerity, and you've got a, an incredible um, communication piece through your platform. And you've also amassed a, a, a tremendous community through um, your, your platform. How long have you been doing Instagram for? Um, yeah, it's funny. I actually can remember the very moment I posted my first photo. Like I remember distinctly the very first moment I posted my first photo. Right. And, you know, social media has sometimes I feel like has such a negative connotation. Mm. And when social media came out, I had this thing of like, why does this have to be bad? Mm. Why can't this be good? Why can't this be something that people look to and share the positive of how people are living in an abundance life? And I never looked at it as a way to, you know, because a lot of people, social media can be awful and you get on there and it's like, this is the worst thing in the entire world. Mm -hmm. So probably for me, hard building of social media and realizing that I use it as a tool and I use it as a way to build community, I would probably say for about seven to eight years. Mm -hmm. And awesome. it was, it, it, it's taken consistency and it's taken effort to build that community. Mm. So cool. It's, it's an amazing thing. I mean, this is, a, this is always an interesting topic. Um, you know, in the modern world that, you know, the, this it's so social media can be so polarizing and people either view it as this terrible thing or this wonderful thing, you know? Um, and even just by saying that we all recognize that the truth of every situation, including social media is it's in the gray and it is, it depends on how you use it, you know? And it's, it's, it's funny, like, um, 
I'm, I'm probably not as um, active on social media. I'm still pretty active on it. My partner loves it. And whenever we try to have a date together every day and I'm reading and she's scrolling social media and we, we all view scrolling social media as this time wasting thing, but she's so selfish with who she follows that she views it as a time to just, just be absolutely bombarded with, um, inspiration, mm. encouragement, mm. um, community mm. joy. So it, it really does speak to kind of what you're, what you're getting out there lane with it can be an incredibly powerful tool for good we just yeah. need some intention behind it yeah and i think too like you have to define you have to define what people are going to get from you mm. when people come to my page or they come to me they're going to get real they're going to get vulnerable they're going to get maybe a little bit of a humor but they're going to get something that's real and people want to see that nowadays, the transition of the perfectly curated social media profiles and the perfectly formed pictures, like that's out. That's yeah. just not the way people want to see things anymore. People want to know the real people want to know the vulnerability they want it because like everyone's busy, you know, everyone, everyone's busy. And, and that's the thing too. It's just like, you know, all the, uh, the social media people or I don't want to say people, but it's just like you know, everyone's so busy nowadays. Everyone has a big fancy car. Everyone has a, you know, a jet or something. And it's like, that's not the, that's not true. Yeah. Like that's not mm. true. People want real and people want vulnerability. Mm. So mm. how you, how are you going to show up and how are you going to define what social media, what, what it is for you? And, and it's great that you're, you're stepping into that authenticity and it really shines through because the problem with all these representations of the cars and the jets is, People may not on a conscious level believe it, but subconsciously they are comparing themselves to these um, to these larger-than-life curated, um, you know, like manufactured personas of people that are that, that are being created. And ultimately the, the, the end result of this is subconsciously feeling less than and feeling like they are, um, you, you know, not, not good enough. And, uh, you know, we were talking about this a little while ago, Lane. It's about being able to really create an intention behind there are tools everywhere, but it's like if you have an element of self-awareness and if you have an element and an intention behind how to use that tool, that's the power that you can step into. Yeah, and I tell people that all the time when I, you know, if I consult with people and they're, you know, they want to build a brand on social media, or they want to, you know, build a following on social media. It's like, well, how are you going to show up? Mm. Like, how are you going to show up? Are you going to be, are you going to show your face? Are you going to be real? Are you going to be vulnerable? And then also like, how, how, what is, what, how much time are you going to spend on this? Mm. Are you going to use it as a tool? Or are you just going to use it as something that is <laughs> passerby? And that's what mm. I encourage people. Like you have to define what you want social media to look like and how you want it to play in your life and in your business. Yes. But, um, Lane, do you, what, what if someone comes to you and, and wants to get into entrepreneurship and building a brand on, on social media, but you know, doesn't really know exactly um, how that looks from the beginning um, and might also be prone to, to diving into the deep end and seeing how it builds over time. What, what are some strategies you can give people like that? That's a good question. And it's funny, I'm kind of building some things on the back end right now, because like Paul said too, I'm, I am very fresh into this and I have the pillars of of what I want this to look like. But when people come to me right now, I always start with mindset. Hmm. I always start with mindset because, and, and you, you gentlemen may know it too, if you aren't in the right mindset for this business or for this industry, then it's, it's, you're not going to be in it for very long. Let's be honest. You're not going to be in it for very long. And then also coaching them of, hey, how uncomfortable are you ready to be? Mm. Because it's going to be very uncomfortable. And if you can learn to set into that, then let's talk. Mm. Mm. Then let's talk. And yeah, sorry, go ahead, Len. No, no. I mean, I was just going to say too, like I help, what I help people do is realizing where their passions lie. Mm. And what they want to do, I would say, you know, if, if you could talk to yourself a year ago, what would you help yourself do? Mm. What would you help yourself do five years ago? What would you help yourself do? And then let's, let's 
begin to form how you can either start a business or create a course or create a mastermind or something like that. Because I, I know we're all built for more. I truly all do know that we all built for more. And I think everyone has that moment in their life where they can say, dang it, I'm going that way or I'm going that way. Mm. And I've decided I'm going that way. But the people that decide to go that way, they just don't have the clear direction. They don't know mm. where to start or who to who to connect with. And that's why I think people's stories matter. That's why I'm so intrigued by interviewing people because what I could say may change someone's life. Mm. What Paul could say, what Tom could say could change someone else's life. So it's just like helping people have those mentors and understand, okay, this is where I'm at. This is where I want to go. And this is how I'm going to get there. Mm, fantastic. So you made a re- had a really, really bold uh, move on your own behalf, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year and you quit your job. Uh, take us through what you were feeling when that happened um, mm. and what were the next steps after that for you uh, emotionally but also physically? Mm, man. I'm going to take you back. Um, wow. That's a good question. I'm going to take you back to a moment uh, probably about a year ago. It was about a year. Well, maybe about a year and a half ago. I was sitting at lunch and my boss at the time, who I respected more than anything in the entire world, he was a leader. And if he listens to this because he and him and I are good friends, I, I tell him all the time, you need to get out of that job because you are a leader. <laughs> You're, you don't need to be in corporate America. And we were sitting there and we got done eating lunch and he brought his book out, his portfolio out. And he was talking about my career path. He was like, you know, here is where you're at now. In two to three years, you're going to go do this. In two to three years, you're going to go do that. And then you're going to end here if you want to. And guys, I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait, he just planned out my entire life. Like, what if I don't want to do this? Mm. Like why, what if I don't want to do this? So I got in the car and I just remember I sat there, I sat there in the parking lot and I just was almost brought to tears because I was like, I didn't sign up for this. I did not sign up for someone to tell me what I was going to do the rest of my life. Mm. And I, and I'll never forget that moment. I will never forget that lunch for the long, as, as long as I can remember. And it was always in the back of my mind. And as the months go on, I could see the finish line. Things were playing out that the time was coming. The time was near. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. It was terrifying. Mm. The, the, it was terrifying because I was leaving something that was comfortable. Mm. I was I, I had the, the six-figure job. I had the car i had the insurance I, I was mortified like what i have i have a at that time i had a three four month i was he was four months old and i just sat in that and i was like what am i doing mm. like, how am i going to do this what am i going to do um so it was a it was a pretty terrifying place but i knew in the back of my mind that i was rooted in what i believed in and I knew that I was hungry enough to keep pushing for what I believed in and what I was going to do. And no one was going to tell me what my life was going to look like in five to 10 years. I mm. had control of that. Mm, love that. But, but if, 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 if maybe your listeners are listening to that, to this right now, and if you're in that, let me just tell you, I can, I feel you. I feel that moment. I, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to say, no more. I don't want to do this, but it's also, it can be terrifying. And I don't think people, I don't think people are vulnerable enough to admit that it can be terrifying, but you Mm. still know it's going to be okay, but it still can be terrifying. Mm. Yeah. And I I just want to point out something there quickly as well for the listeners, because what you went through um, and then what actually ended up leading to built for more is a really a uh, poignant lesson that I think people need to recognize is that there's going to be anxiety on either side of the coin. And it's so interesting that 
what what anxiety is at its crux is uncertainty. So what we try to do as human beings is we create certainty in our lives. But then paradoxically, when we can see the finish line, that's equally terrifying. So we actually can't escape that fear. So what would we prefer? Would we prefer the fear of certainty or the prefer, or, or would we prefer the fear of an adventure? And we'd absolutely prefer the adventure, you know? And it's just, I think what what I really love about your story there, Lane, is that people often use, um, and I mean this empathetically, of course, but people use fear as a reason to stay on the, the, the bridge and not jump off, you know, but at the same time, they're living in that fear because they can see the finish line and they can see how their life is going to play out. And we don't want that either. So because you're damned, if you do, and damned, if you don't, why not choose the adventure, you know, Mm -hmm. why not create your own narrative and live that life? Yeah. Paul, and were you going to say something? I was. And I was just going to add what I found, and you're so you're so right there, Tommy Boy, but um, what I also found to be incredibly and equal as interesting was when your child was three months old is when you chose, when, when these signs just came to you and you said enough is enough, I need to step out, I need to be bold here, I need to be vulnerable. That's a time where a lot of people would be wow. like, you know what, I've got to be <laughs> conservative because this, that and the other. But the ability for you to be able to have that element of self-awareness, for you to be able to say, I want to be, I, I, I want to be living my best life right now. I want to be an example to my child as I bring them into this world is uh it's really commendable because it's bold Mm. and it's and it's like you said it's a it's uh, it's terrifying is what it is but you're stepping into it mate so you're choosing that terror as opposed to having the terror being involuntary put upon you by someone else Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I can't, I can't reiterate that enough. And what you said too, was like, well, you're going to be in this, you might as well be in it and be in control of it as well. But I will, I will, I want to gloss, I want to, I don't want to gloss. I want to step into it. And I will tell you the listeners, this too, is when this was happening, when, and I think this is one of the biggest lessons that I've had thus far in this journey of mine is when this was transpiring at the beginning of the year and I was like, okay, I know what's next, but really what's next? You know what I mean? It's like, what, wh- wh- where's the money going to come from? Yeah, like, right. I got, <laughs> I got a one-year-old here. Like where's I got come pills from? to pay. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got stuff to do here. Like I, 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 I got a family and I got quiet for 21 days. I got quiet for 21 days and I didn't go to the gym for 21 days, I, I let I I, I I I was in deep prayer and meditation. Every single morning, mm-hmm. I would go to a secret spot here in in Tennessee, and I would no one was there, and I would just be, and I would just I would just be in deep deep prayer and meditation, and I was like, "What's next? What's next? What's next?" And I kid you not, I get cold chills every single time I say this. On day 22, day 22. I woke up and I had five emails in my email inbox of people that were asking me that they needed help with their marketing and creating a brand for themselves. Mm, Wow. And I was like, this is it. Like, this is it. And so I I never want to gloss over that part of the story because I believe it was in those moments of being still and being quiet that something brilliant came out of. Mm, God, I love that. It's unbelievable. So mm. we we haven't really uh, like fleshed out. So is this an element of what it is that you currently do? Are you out like are you using your um, ability to market and in sales to to, to be able to uh, connect with other people and assist them in their branding? It is. Yeah, that is an that is a facet of of what the whole built for more brand is, is helping people with mindset, sales, marketing, communication. Cool. That is the, that is the, um, the, the pillars that I tell people that I enjoy helping them with, coach them with in, in, in forms of communications <clears throat> in corporate or sales and corporate and marketing, creating your own brand. That's, those are the pillars that I stick into. It's so refreshing. I just want to say before you, before you ask a, a question, yeah, sure. Tom, uh, 
you know, I've come from the marketing world and I love that there are people like you stepping into this space, um, teaching people to develop their own awareness around themselves before they can step into that marketing world because it just means that the marketing world is going to be more aware, it's going to be more um uh, ethical and there's going to be a, a, just a, just a greater sense of self when when stepping into this and understanding mm. that it doesn't need to be a dishonest industry you just need to uh, be able to um, express yourself and communicate with honesty and integrity so well done mate mm. yeah, yeah yeah i appreciate that i think um I, I, what i'd really love to to know um i think it'd be really good for the list as well is what what is working in, in today's world when it comes to marketing. Now, I think you've touched on some of this um, and I, was something that I've, I've certainly taken away from what you've said so far is that having that empathetic nature, it's like, hey, I've been where you're at. This is how I move forward through it as well. Let me show you how. But if you could speak on what really is is working in today's world for, for marketing, um, I think it'd be fantastic. Mm -hmm. What, what what's working today and then maybe what's working tomorrow because tomorrow may change. Yes. Mm, yes. Right? <laughs> no, but what, what I have seen, um, what I have seen is authenticity and vulnerability is working tremendously. Um, and, and getting in the mind of the consumer that you're going after and being extremely niched down, extremely niched down. The world and, and social media is so cluttered right now with noise. Mm. And until you are very niched down, I don't believe you can find your target customer or tar target audience. If everyone is a customer, no one's a customer. Mm. Yeah. And I think that that's where a lot of people and entrepreneurs start and say, well, I'm going to create this business and I'm going to create this brand and everyone's going to buy it. And I'm like, <laughs> you're not going to last because yeah. everyone doesn't need it. Mm. Yeah. Whereas in if, if, if you, you, you talk with someone and they have a product that is so very niche down. I mean, I've got a friend of mine that is in the packaging business and he helps people ship things across the world. And he's got, like that, I mean, I didn't even know about this business, you know, I mean, I didn't even know it existed, but he, he was like, man, I've got like a hundred people that consume my stuff on a daily basis and I'm a consultant and they pay me four or 500 bucks. I mean, you do the math. Mm, yeah. I mean, you don't need to, <clears throat> to be everything to everyone. Yeah. You need to be yourself and real and vulnerable and talk to the people that want to be where you currently are mm. that's who you need to talk to that's who you need to be and and you'll see if you go to social media nowadays it's so fun because i can always go to someone's profile more times than not on on instagram and you can tell that they are very very focused on their niche mm. and that's what they're doing or you can go to someone's profile and they're kind of all over the place and it's like they're just a little confused, and that's okay because that's the way social media used to be. That's mm, the way marketing mm. used to be. But now if you can nail down your niche and market to those specific customers and market to that specific person that needs it, I believe that's where you're going to win in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting one. I, um, I'll, I'll be completely open and honest. I, um, when I was getting heavily into entrepreneurship, I um, – I, I, I didn't really know how to niche down. In fact, that's that's a lie. I did know how to niche down, but I didn't want to because I was still in that space of being interested in about 49,000 things. And as soon as I niche down in one area, I'm like, oh my God, but relationships are so interesting. I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. Oh, but death and dying is so interesting. I work as a counselor and I'm still kind of in that place. So what I've actually moved to now is just recognizing the fact of like stepping back a little bit, allowing an interest to really kind of reign supreme over all the other interests and then seeing where that might take me. But it was, it was very interesting in the beginning. I was like, I want to do this. Yeah. I want to do this. I'm like, okay, hang on. I think I'm just young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think that's okay too. I mean, I, I, I've talked with people and consulted with people and I think it's okay. I, I don't, I don't, 
I think we give ourselves enough grace in not knowing exactly what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And, it, mm-hmm. and it, it goes back to my point of I wasn't ready to create this until I went through something else. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. people beat themselves up of, you know, I talked to a college kid the other day and, and he said, I just don't know what to do. And I don't know what to do. And I was like, bro, you're 18. It's fine. <laughs> you're going to be okay. Like you're going to be okay. <laughs> Isn't it amazing at the age of eight? Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Like, go on. no, I mean, again, it's just like, go live life, bro. Mm. Like I've got half life on you. Like go live <laughs> your life. And you're not going to be able, and he, he was talking to me about, you know, starting a podcast and, and launching a website. And it's like, I wasn't ready to do that. I wasn't ready. I hadn't gone through what I needed to go through. And I, and I, and, and it wasn't until I was ready for that. Mm. Mm. I think that's a wonderful message. Go for it, Paul. The, the, the education world that we live in there there is this tremendous expectation yes. at the age of 18 for you to be able to carve out what it is that you do. In America, it is very different to in Australia. I will say that when we step into the university world, it's like we need to identify our path from go to work. You step into a marketing uh, course, you step into a psychology course, you step into a law course, whatever it might be. I know in America, the university system is different. You do like, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be way wrong, but like you do like a generalised educational uh, process and then you step into pre-law or your pre-med or your pre this or is that does that sound is that right it's the worst mm-hmm. you are taking uh, oh gosh I, I i graduated with a marketing and sales and logistical degree i spent my first two years in science and math classes right and they told me all these classes you were never going to have a calculator for the rest of your life so you need to get good at doing it on paper <laughs> nice. i want to go back to all those teachers and be like hey <laughs> i've got a phone and I can do all that stuff right That's now it. so yeah. on you yeah. yeah i don't even need to look at my phone i can just say hey siri What's four thousand <laughs> times? Uh, oh, oh my God! I want my money back. That's what I want. <laughs> totally. Well, that's another good point as well. I mean, you know, one of the things here is that uni, um, we have kind of a hex debt system where once you start earning above a certain threshold, the, the, the money that's taken out of your tax directly goes back to your uni loan. But in America, it's much more kind of free market. Is you have to, it's a college fund is a real thing, and they're they're extremely expensive degrees and so forth. It's the most ex- it's the most expensive piece of paper that I've ever bought in my entire life. Mm-hmm. But but here 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 and this is a good point. I'm actually I'm glad you brought this up because people um, I'll, I'll use the word poo poo, you, you know whatever poo poo. Yeah. On a college degree, but but where would I be if I had not learned? Yes the things within that college four year period. Mm -hmm. I learned self-discipline. I learned how to live a life. And so everyone's like, you don't need a college degree. And I'm like, okay, I get that. And I understand what you're saying, but I also learned a lot of lessons in that time frame. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a hard statement and a hard argument to have. A hundred percent. And what would you, you know, you asked the question uh, earlier on in, in this chat, um, and I'm just going to reflect that back to you. If you were to have a conversation with yourself five years ago, what would you uh, tell yourself uh, from from the position right now? Wow. Um, keep keep going. And know that everything that you are dreaming about and envisioning will come to life. Mm-hmm. So we just got done decluttering our house. I want to tell you guys the story. My wife, who is, she's a rock star, Chelsea. She's the best mom in the entire world. And I love her to death. She and I, um, we started to build an online business about six years ago. And we really started to get into vision boards. Are you guys familiar with kind of the oh, vision yes. boards? And all definitely. So we're, definitely. So we're real big into that. And we were decluttering our house um, this past month because our house is a disaster um, with a <laughs> one-year-old. And so now it's decluttered and it's fantastic and it's the best thing ever. But we found our vision board from six years ago. And 
guys, it brought tears to my eyes. I was living the life that I wanted to live. I left corporate America. I was a dad. I had my car of my dreams and I'm just sitting there cold chills. And I'm like, how did I get there? Like how, <laughs> like, what did I do? How did I get there? So if I could go back five years, I would say, don't stop dreaming. Don't stop pushing. And don't let anyone tell you how you're going to live your life and mm. just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I just love that. I, and it, it is amazing. You know, I, I vision boards are just fantastic. They, they really are. Um, having that point B and that destination, you know, I think is, 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 is so important. And Lena, I, I wanted to come back to that point you made about um, college degrees, because I just love that you said that. Um, there is a real thing in this day and age now of, um, as you said, you know, poo-pooing on the, on the college degree, on the university degree. And you um, one of the things that I've noticed um, that that acts as a detriment to people's lives is, you know, you you might, um, you know, you might meet meet a typical kind of forty five year old or whatever it is, um, even earlier sometimes now, who's reflecting on their lives, they're going through a bit of a crisis, and they're thinking, oh my god, you know, the, half my life's gone, and I've, you know, I've I've wasted it, you know, I, I just did the corporate America thing, and you know, or the corporate Australia thing, and it wasn't what I want to do. I've got all these other ideas and all that so and so forth. Um, and they see it all as a failure, you know, but something that I'm really hearing through through your language, which is a much more optimistic way to look at it, is you can only come to this realisation of knowing that that is not what you want to do by doing it. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have ever figured that out if you didn't climb that ladder. And people feel such depression and pain and grief and loss and remorse. Like, oh, my God, I've just climbed up this ladder and it's not what I want to do. How on earth would you know that if you hadn't have done it? You know, so I just, I just, let's stamp that message that you made. I think it was perfect. I loved it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, and it's such a good, like, what did you learn in those moments mm. that you can then coach other people on? So, this, this is an interesting statistic. 7% decline year over year college rates in the United States. Mm. 7%. Wow. Okay. Which de which equates to million, I can't forget how many millions of dollars in tuition, mm. but someone is going to get that education somewhere. That's why the self-education world is so uh, important right now because people are still getting that right now. Yeah. So what, like this, the, the person that, you know, I just climbed the corporate ladder for nothing. Life is nothing. Well, hold on a second. What did you just learn that you can then teach to someone else mm -hmm. and create a business out of that? Mm -hmm. You didn't do something just to do something. And, and, and it's so important for people to realize that. Yeah. 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 Pe people get asked so much, what's the meaning of life? And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've heard it often from, from really, profoundly uh, inspiring people and they generally say the meaning of life is searching for the meaning of life, you know, and everything, everything can be encompassed in that. Your life experience is the, you know, the difficulties that we go through, the challenges that we experience, that all adds to every single input that makes us who we are today. So I, I think that um, everything that you've gone through and, the uh, the guidance that you've been able to give others throughout your own life experience is uh, it's remarkable. It's it's inspiring, mate. Really inspiring. Mm. Yeah, no, I appreciate that, and I and I believe that. I believe when you put good into this world, you will get good back, and when you live a life full of abundance, you will reap the benefits from that. And there, there there's just no way. Or there's no, why would you want to go through life any living any other way? Living any other way, Lane? You, you, you're right, and I've I've one last question for you, uh, and I and I do like to ask this: What's one thing? And feel free to take your time that you would suggest to the people listening out here that they can activate today that will add value to their lives and to those around them. Mm. Activate your ability to dream. People like don't that. dream. Mm. People, people have lost the ability to dream. Mm. They don't, they don't know what it's like. They don't know what it's like to wake up and be happy. They don't know what it's like to sit there and say, 
this is what I want for my life. What, what, ha- what, what happened to the kid in us to say, I want to go, I want to go be an astronaut or I want to go be mm. like, where did that go? Why are, why are we like that nowadays? So dream again, activate mm. that, write down your visions, write, do a vision board. Like anytime that, you know, I, I'm like getting down on myself or thinking about like, I'll doodle on my page. Like, this is what I want. This is what I'm grateful for. This mm. is what I'm dreaming about. So activate that dreaming muscle and just dream. I love it. Espe- especially in the world that I'm I'm living in right now, surrounded by parents uh, who are in this survival mode, Right. If you give yourself that release valve just for two minutes a day to dream, all of a sudden this whole new world opens up for you. And I think um, that is a really, really powerful way to end this uh, chat because it's something that um, I know I'm I'm about to go uh, sweat and I think I'm going to dream while I'm sweating. I'm going to put that (laughs) into, I'm going to put that, I'm about to go um, for a swim actually for the first time in a very long time. And I I find swimming, immersing myself in water, being in a a very meditative state. So I'm going to use that as a, uh, as an intention behind that. Mm. Lane, where can uh, people find you and what's, um, what's coming up for you in the next six months? Uh, That's good, man. Yeah. So people can find me. I'm pretty active on, uh, on Instagram. You can go to Lane Taylor underscore underscore, and you can find all my stuff there. Uh, The built for more podcast is on Apple and Spotify. Um, I've got, a laundry list of, of, of guests that I've already gotten out there that we've already done the interviews. You can go to lane taylor.co. There's not an M on there. So it's just lane taylor.co. You can sign up for the newsletter and that's where I'll probably, I'm going to start coming out with the four pillars of courses that I'm, you know, that I'm going to be doing as well. And then again, mo- most time, if you, if you follow me on social media, you can, you can shoot me a DM and most times I'll try to get back within 24 to 48 hours, but that's, that's where you can go and find me. Awesome, man. Legend. Awesome. Such a pleasure to speak with you, mate. Uh, it's been you guys. great to have you on the show, Lane, and uh, looking forward to continuing this friendship, mate. Yeah, I honor you guys. Thank you. This is, I, I tell my wife, the fact that someone wants to hear a little bit of my story and in hopes that it may inspire them, I honor you guys for giving me this time, and I hope that this has added value to some of your listeners. Mm, mm, absolutely beautiful thank you mate thank you paulie as always we'll uh speak to you all very soon thanks Bye-bye. tom Th- thanks thanks